Hey everyone, in this video, I'm going to go over how you can do your account based marketing using uh, lots of data or using AI. And so, what I mean by account based marketing is when you have a list of 200 companies and you need to do really deep research on them, how do you leverage artificial intelligence in order to find out everything that you should know so that you can scale across these companies? And so in this video, we're going to go over how we can uh, take a look at what job postings a company has and then deduct uh, what problems are they trying to solve with those job postings? The other thing that we're going to deduct is what the company's mission is and what they do. We're going to figure out who their ideal customers are. Are they a B2B or a B2C company? We'll figure out their average pricing. We're going to figure out the uh, following of their social media accounts. We'll also figure out some of their competitors, some technographic information, and some leadership changes in the past 12 months. This is going to help us make uh, some other things like. Uh, you know, some lines based on the job titles and what are the priority and challenges for the people that they're hiring. And then we will also take a look at some other AI written lines as well. So without further ado, let's jump into it. And so this is our clay table here where we're hosting this data. I just have a couple of companies in this list to just show as an example. So for the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to find the active job openings that the company has and then use AI to determine what this uh, company is looking to solve for. So inside of Clay, we have the find active job openings via LinkedIn. And then we could also use the Google Jobs integration or we could use the predict leads jobs integration, right? Find active job openings by domain. We could use all of those. All we need is the job description. Once we have the job description, we can reach out to people and, well, we won't use this to reach out to people, but what we're gonna do is put in this prompt and we're gonna say, using the input job description, summarize what problem the company is trying to solve with hiring this person. The job description will mention day-to-day -day tasks, but ignore those and focus on the strategic reason the company is hiring this person. Also consider the description of the person and how hiring this person would help the company. The job description to reference is here, and the description of the company to reference is here. So we're looking for the problems that they're trying to solve for, what day-to-day -day tasks they're gonna be doing, and then how does that relate to the overall mission of the company? And so an output for six cents, and it looks like they're hiring for a support reliability specialist. Uh, six cents is in the business of revolutionizing the process of B2B generation. Uh, the company's core challenge that it seeks to address with the specified role of a reliability support is to enhance reliability, speed, and scalability of its services and infrastructure. By hiring a reliability support specialist, the company aims to ensure a swift, safe, and reliable product delivery through the improvements of its monitoring. Blah, blah. The intended results here is to improve their services uptime. Great. And contribute to their, as they maximize revenue. Great. So we got some nuggets here. They're looking to hire this person because they want to maximize uptime. If you're a company that maximizes uptime, boom, this is something that you could be reaching out with. And so uh, this prompt, it could be improved for your use case. Uh, we didn't put any job title keywords in here. So if you put in some job title keywords or some um, job description keywords that would help you know, okay, they're having this problem. That's how you would improve this prompt for yourself. Now, uh, it's super easy to figure out what the mission of the company is. Uh, you literally just have to put this using the input. What is the mission of the company? Uh, keep the output under eight words and use specific words. Each output should contain my prefix. The output should not include any quotation marks at all. This is my prefix. I was on your site and noticed you help. And cool. So then six cents. I was on your site and noticed you help predict, engage, uh, predict and engage potential customers. That's exactly what Sixth Sense does. So now if you're looking to do account-based marketing, now we've knocked off, okay, they're hiring for this position and here's what they need to solve. If you do something specific, just ask AI and say like, are they looking to solve this problem right now? And it'll tell you yes or no. And now we have the uh, mission of the company. And so if you wanna use AI to figure out the, uh, pro the job titles that they usually sell to, we can do that as well. And so all we do here is using the input, determine three customer types a company usually sells to. This is the input. 
Uh, and then we do the description output either three job titles that the company sells to or three types of people depending on what makes more sense keep the output to just the types of people or job titles and nothing else and so here this is important to give it examples because if you don't give it examples it's not going to know exactly what you mean and so i gave it some examples on a b2b company and i gave it examples on a b2c company so that it knows hey if i can give it job titles but if there's not job titles because it's b2c then we'll do you know types of people and things like that. And so then that's our next one to figure out who they sell to. The other thing that we can do here is we're determining, uh, oh no, here what we're doing is determining if the company is a B2C company or a B2B company. This prompt is very, very simple. Uh, I literally am like a B2B company is a company that sells to other companies. A B2C company is a company that sells to consumers. Using the input, tell me if the company is likely a B2B or B2C company. And we just use the company description and that gets us uh, right there. And so like most of these are B2B companies, but if we check out this B2C right here, who is this? Avo.com, what does Avo do? Easy for people to research, find it, connect with the right lawyer. Yeah, definitely B2C. So great. Now, a big one that's gonna come up all the time, average pricing. What do they, what's the pricing? How do they charge and all of these things? So this is a little bit difficult to get because of the messiness of people's websites and the way that they structure them. I usually like to start with a Google search. And once I get the Google search, I'm gonna do a site search on the domain. And so this is literally like site, sixcents.com is basically what this looks like. And so when I say site, what that's doing is it's saying, hey, I want every search result on Google, but it if the search results have to come from this website. And then I want in URL pricing. And I'm saying, you know, whatever price like URL that you have, I want that URL to have pricing in it. And I want the dollar sign. The reason I want the dollar sign is because if they ever put pricing in their URL, and it's just a blog about pricing, I don't want that. I put the dollar sign to get uh, one of the dollar signs inside of the text on the page. And so for some of these companies, like this one, Six Cents, oh, whoops. So see like Six Cents, we got their pricing page. And I know you can't see this tab, but I'm just telling you Six Cents does not allow you to see any pricing. So that that's kind of a tough one. It's just book a demo. You can't you can't see anything. And so if we I'm just going to skip to one that we do have. So see how this is branch.io pricing. And then in this text, we have the, the pricing from them. And it says the company offers two main pricing plans, self-serve or enterprise. And so the way that we got that is because we got the link, the first link that was uh, had pricing in the URL and it had the dollar sign. And then we use scrape website from Clay to get the body text of what's on that page. Once we pull in the body text of what's on that page, we use AI to determine what the output is. And so a lot of these don't qualify because they're a lot of them are B2B companies and things like that. Um, and so for instance, like Clay is down here and it found our pricing page and it says the company offers three plans, the starter plan, the pro plan, oh, whoops, and the explorer plan, great. So the way I prompted this, very, very simple. <laughs> Return the pricing of the company. This is the input. That's all I put because uh, the the uh, text is so large that I kept it really, really simple. And so what I would do is just get this. And then if you need to use it in an email, further squeeze it down with another AI prompt. And so then that's how I would get pricing. Ah, and then this is one that I'm asked about all the time is how could I get a company's uh, social media followers? And so I used search Google here. What we could have also done is we could have used the Scrape website over here and see how in Scrape website, we have their Instagram, we have their LinkedIn, we have their Twitter. If I if you just do a Google search for their uh, Twitter account, right? And that's maybe what I even did. Oh, that is what I did. Okay, great. And so all I did was just cite URL one. URL one comes from the Scrape website that I was just showing you as well. And then we just have the followers. And so then, um, the reason I put followers in, in here is so in the Google snippet, it shows up with how many followers that they have. And so we can click on this and you'll see, uh, oh, nope, it's not in this one. Here's where it says how many followers they have. And then we just ask AI and I just put in the whole search result. I say, hey, how many followers does this company in the input have? Boom. And then I get the, the followers from them. 
So that one's not difficult as well. Competitors. This is a fun one. Okay, so in order to get competitors, I played with this Google search a ton and I finally got it. So I think the best way to do this, and I'm open to suggestions and I might even change this one day, is if you were to Google the company name, the country that the company is in, and then just competitors, just that, you should get pretty good results. And so I'm even going to scroll down here and look at some of these. And so um, what this is going to do is it's going to pull results from similar web, Zoom Info, CB Insights, uh, G2, Trustradius, Owler, all of these different platforms. And so what I did is I set the number of results. Oh, I guess I set it to five. Okay, great. And um, then you're going to get these results. What's going to happen is you're going to get like, see all these search results that you get? So avo.com, this is from similar web. So their competitors are lawyers.com, nolo.com, martindale, finelaw.com. Great. And then let's look at Clay, right? And so we get, this is G2, top 10 alternatives. That's so funny. That's not our competitors. Very funny. But I have a way to get around this. Best alternatives to Clay are Airtable, Clearbit, and Bow. Cool. All right, and great. And so now some of those companies were not actual uh, competitors to Clay. How do we account for that? Thanks for asking. So what we do is we put in the... So first I wrote a formula where I just mapped the competitor search results and that was it. I hope this is here. So I said filter for just the text that is under the snippet category. And that's all I wanted is just the snippet category. I didn't need all of the extra extra garbage. So then what I did is I used AI and basically the premise I was looking for was tell me who the competitor is in the lookup and do not include the company name that I'm looking up because they're, they're the competitor. I mean, they're the company I'm looking for competitors for, so don't include their name. But basically I want um you to name if the if possible if the competitors mentioned will multiple times name them this is the input and so um basically i was saying like the more times that it shows up i want you to name them and so then instead of you know some of those garbage results for competitors to clay that's how we were still able to get Airtable to get pulled out because it was putting it down um it just came up so much more often and so then that's how i would find competitors pretty easily and then predict leads also has a really good news source. And so here we we're just looking for just regular news. And I automated, you know, a summary of that news article using AI. Nothing crazy here. Um, so yeah, predict leads has really good news data for you. One thing that people were looking for was new senior leadership uh, in the last 12 months. And so the easy way to do this is to just use our integration uh, called find contacts at company. And I, I guess I'll pull that up for people that need to see it. So find contacts at company is the one that I'm using here. And I literally just put in 12 months and I could refine this and I could say chief marketing officer, vice president of marketing. And I could see key leadership changes in the marketing department over here. Um, and then all I did was I just found, I just extrapolated the, the first person in the list, which now you can see the list is going away. And so then we move through and let's look at here. I can find people's recent LinkedIn posts. This is just our LinkedIn post integration. And I automated creating a snippet about the text in that post and then reaching out to them. So I just wanted to reach out because I started a post about working on AAV and T-cell products with Berkeley Lights at Phenome X. So we could check it. Excited to continue working on AAV and T-cell products at a company at Phenomex. Okay, perfect. And that's exactly what we did. So the way you prompt this, super, super easy, is using the input to complete my prompt in under eight words, keep the output short and use specific keywords from the post. These are social media posts by other people. Super easy, nothing crazy. What did we do here? Here I deducted what department this person that I pulled over here is from. Um, so, you know, their title is account manager and they're in the sales department. Their title is COO and they're in the operations department. Just another deduction to help you with your account based marketing. And so the prompt is using the input. Tell me what uh, department the job title belongs to. This is an input. Use well-known department names like, and then I just put in a bunch of department names. Um, if the job title were assistant marketing, then the output would be marketing. And then I just gave it an example to just work off of. 
Uh, and then here is where we synced the job description with the, the company. And so basically I found another open job. Um, and I basically was like, what com what problem are they trying to solve? I just did this again. It's not that big of a deal, actually. Based on the job description, Best Egg seeks to improve operations and growth uh, across its various financial products. They aim to hire an operations strategy and analyst and, you know, pretty easy stuff. And so um, let's see. There's a couple other ones that are on this list. Like people ask me all the time how to clean job titles. And that's super easy. You just come in and you could browse our presets and then you could just clean contact titles. And we'll just ground job title from, let's see, new senior leadership. And we'll just take it from this title. And we can click on use preset. We can preview the results and then run it. It's super easy to clean job titles that way. Um, let's see. I think that's everything that I wanted to do on my list. So again, this video was all about how can we leverage artificial intelligence in order to automate your account-based marketing. If there's anything else that you usually like to search for when you do account-based marketing, just let me know. Uh, I was trying to cover all of the things that the normal tools provide, like Owler and you know those kind of tools that, that provide just static information about companies. So yeah, hope you enjoyed it and let me know.